Welcome dear student for HSC online lecture initiative taken by Shet Vidya Mandir English High School and Junior College of Science and Commerce I am Ms Ragini Singh assistant lecturer of biology and today we are continuing with our chapter enhancement in food production and today's topic is microbes in human welfare Now before I start I request you all to be seated with your notebook and the pen and pencil Let's recall what we studied in the last module. You are supposed to identify the diagram and label its parts. So this is the diagram that we studied in the last module and please identify the part as A B C. Let's check for the answers. The given diagram is tubular tower fermenter and the unlabeled part was A that is alcohol B that represents fermenter and C that represent heat exchanger pump this was the tubular tower fermenter that we studied for the production of alcohol let's begin with today's module what are antibiotics when you talk about the antibiotics it means against the bacteria so this discovery of antibiotics was done by the great scientist dr alexander fleming how did alexander discover the antibiotics as we all know most of the discoveries are a result of the accidental discoveries similarly once dr alexander fleming was working with staphylococcus aureus abbreviated as s aureus this was the bacteria which was killed by the fungus and the fungus name was penicillium and accidentally dr alexander fleming discovered the antibiotics microbes in industrial production the microorganisms are very very useful for the industrial production let's see how the very first is production of antibiotics as this is the continuation of the last module we are continuing with the microbes in human welfare and the sub topic for today we start with the production of antibiotics now if you look at the diagram below if you look at this image below you can find out that this is the antibiotics which is working against the bacteria but when it reaches to the last bacteria it is not able to kill it means this has become resistant to this antibiotics and this is one of the major drawback of the antibiotics that is the bacteria are becoming multi drug resistance and it's a big challenge also for the scientists to overcome this Now, if you talk about the antibiotics, these are the antibiotics. Names are very, very important. The very first is chloromycetine, and the microorganism that is producing it, or it is produced by the microorganism that is Streptomyces venezuelae. Chloromycetine is the name of the antibiotic, and the microbial source is Streptomyces venezuelae. Erythromycin, Streptomyces erythreus. Penicillin. Penicillium chrysogenum, Streptomycin, Streptomyces griseus, Griseofulvin that is Penicillium griseofulvum, Bacitracin, Bacillus lichniformis. Finally, Oxytetracycline or Teramycin. It's been produced by organism Streptomyces aurifaciens. So these are the antibiotics produced and the microorganism used as a source. you are supposed to remember the name for remembering the name make sure you are every day practicing at least the name of the five antibiotics and their microbial sources the more you revise the more you practice the more it will be set in your brain next is production of enzymes now the name of the enzymes are invertase pectinase lipase cellulase how do we know they are the enzyme because at the end that is the suffix is ase and whenever the suffix is ase it is the name of the enzyme in what is produced by the organism saccharomyces cerevisiae pectinase produced by sclerotiana libertine or aspergillus niger lipase produced by candida lipolytica cellulase produced by trichoderma conigi now if you observe this 
a video down you will find that this is the enzyme enzyme is attached with the substrate which lead to the product production of the product it means enzyme plus substrate gives you product so this is how enzyme basically reacts to give you the product at the end product is set free and enzyme is also set free again it can be used for the further reactions your next is gibberellin production now gibberellin has a very great history now what is the story of this gibberellin is that in the japan especially the japan people they do the rice farming so when the farmer were actually developing this rice crop it means when they were working with the rice crop one day what did they see that the rice plant which has to be in a particular height it just, the height got short up and since it got short up it immediately drooped so the scientists that is the yabuta and sumiki they discovered that it has been infected by a fungus called a gibberella fusicorai and this fungus gibberella fusicorai from this gibberellic acid abbreviated as ga from the fungus gibberella fusicorai the acid that is the gibberellic acid was basically produced finally they used this gibberellic acid in the economic importance and when they studied further they came to know that this increase of the height was due to gibberellic acid and it really and it causes foolish seedling disease of rice called as buckcane now this gibberellic acid at current point of time is used for the expansion of the leaves for example cabbage increase in the length of the stem and all this is basically due to the gibberellic production microbes in sewage treatment yes microorganisms are very important in the sewage treatment because one of the basic reason is that the microorganisms they break down the complex substance into the simpler substance now this waste water includes waste water from many sources such as from kitchen waste hospital waste this waste water cannot be sent directly into the lake sea or any of the ocean so it undergoes three steps the one is the primary treatment second is the secondary treatment and finally the tertiary treatment now what happens basically in the for primary treatment initially there is a screening procedure and the grid setting procedure now in the screening and the grid setting procedure the heavier particles are easily been removed and then they are sent to the primary treatment now in the primary treatment there is the removal of suspended solid particles and there is a settling of the sewage once the sewage is been settled it is been sent for the secondary treatment that is in the aeration tank now what happens in the aeration tank the aeration tank consists of continuous bubbling of oxygen and because of which the aerobic bacteria is formed and finally the treated effluent the water is sent to recycle whereas the sludge the activated sludge found due to this decomposition reaction caused by aerobic bacteria that is the complex substance degraded into simpler is now sent into anaerobic bioreactor that is digester and the action of anaerobic bacteria starts because anaerobic bacteria do not require oxygen and finally the sludge cake is sent to dispose so this is the basic treatment where the microorganism plays a very important role in sewage treatment now what is biogas plant the biogas plants we are studying since the secondary section yes this is the biogas plant where the cow dung especially the cow dung is been sent into this biogas plant the once the gas has been released it is sent into the lighting of the gas and the leftover can be used as a fertilizer let's see and understand what is the main or the basic protocol for this biogas plant here you can see the biogas plant it is fitted well below the soil this is the mixing tank and it's entirely made up of the brick this is the inlet pipe this is the digester tank where the digestion process take place this is the outlet pipe and this is the overflow tank over here there is a generation of a very important gas called as methane and the valve is given for the regulation of the flow and once the methane is generated the gas is been sent for the lightening of the gas that is the cylinder 
So this is the simple design and the basic design for the biogas plant. Although biogas plant in involves the simple thing, but it is actually a very boon to us for the involvement of this methane flame. As methane flame is burns with the blue flame, there is no problem with respect to the pollution. What are the steps? The very first step is hydrolysis or solubilization in which the raw material that is the cattle dung is mixed with water in equal proportion to make slurry which is then fed into digester. Here anaerobic hydrolytic bacteria example Clostridium and Pseudomonas hydrolyze carbohydrates into simple sugars, proteins into amino acids and lipids into fatty acids. It means all the complex substances is basically broken down into the simpler substance. Second step is acidogenesis. In this facultative anaerobic, facultative anaerobic means even if you supply them with the, some amount of oxygen, they will be still surviving. Acidogenic bacteria and obligate anaerobic bacteria. The difference between facultative and anaerobic obligate bacteria is that obligate anaerobic bacteria, they do not require oxygen supply. Even if you give them the slight oxygen supply, they will basically die. They convert simple organic material into acids like formic acid, acetic acid, hydrogen and carbon dioxide. I hope these two steps are clear that is hydrolysis or solubilization and second is acidogenesis. Third step and the very important step is the methanogenesis. Now what happened in this? It is the last stage in which the anaerobic bacteria, especially the methanogenic bacteria, because they produce methane like methanobacterium and methanococcus. They convert acetate, hydrogen and carbon dioxide that we got in the second step into methane. So look at the reaction. 12 molecule of acetic acid will get converted into 12 molecule of methane plus 12 molecule of carbon dioxide. 4 molecule of formic acid will get converted into methane plus 3 molecule of CO2 plus 2 molecules of water. And finally CO2 that is carbon dioxide and 4 molecules of hydrogen will combine to give you methane and 2 molecules of water. Thus the methane generated is a very important fuel. Let's understand the advantages of biogas. The very first advantage it's a renewable source of energy. Second, it is involved in the domestic work. Since it burns with blue flame without smoke, it is eco-friendly. So these are the listed advantages of biogas. Of course, there are a few disadvantages also of this biogas. As we are using cow dung, there are many mosquitoes that is been generated. So when you go with respect to biogas plant to work with it, make sure you go with a proper requirement so that you are not being affected by this mosquito bites. You take proper precautionary measures. Role of microbes as biocontrol agents. Now, these are the pathogens and these are the host. Bacteria that is Bacillus thuringiensis, Bacillus papillae and Bacillus lentimorbus. And the host are caterpillar, cabbage worm, turtle beetle. Now, what does this indicate? What this topic wants to explain is that instead of using any harmful chemicals like pesticides, insecticides, you directly use microorganisms as a biocontrol agent. We know that our farm has been in infected by the many insects. Got it? So, for to kill that insects, we use many pesticides. Instead of that, if you want to kill car caterpillars, cabbage worm, adult beetle, you directly use the culture of Bacillus thuringiensis, Bacillus papillae and Bacillus lentimorbus. What about fungus? The very first name of the fungus, Bioveria bassiana, Entomophthora, Pelidarosium and Zuphthora radicans and the host is Aphid crocai, Aphid unguiculata, millibugs, mites, white flies, all this host can be killed by this fungus. Next is protozoans, nosema locuste and the host is grasshopper, caterpillars, crickets. 
viruses, nucleopolyhedrovirus, NPV and granulovirus, GB. They can kill caterpillars, gypsy moth, ants, wasp and beetles. So these are the microorganisms which can kill the following host and it can be very helpful even to the farmers. What is bioherbicide? See whenever the word comes side, side means to kill, bio means life, killing of the herbs via the microorganisms. So these are the bioherbicides which can be used for so if you observe in this diagram, you can see these are the common types of the weeds. Poison sumac, crabgrass, dandelion, giant ragweed. Now what are the weeds? Weeds are nothing but they are the unwanted plant material that are basically growing. So you can use the biological agents to kill this herbicides. Now weeds are generally not required to grow with our plants otherwise they will start absorbing all the nutrients. This is a flower which is a weed but it's a very beautiful weed and the name is Lantana camera. Microbial herbicides and their host. The very first is pathogenic fungi as myoherbicides. The word myo itself means fungus. So first name is Phytophora palmivora. This is the diagram of the Phytophora palmivora and it controls the milkweed. Now why it is called as milkweed? Because the time you break the stem or you break the leaf, there is the milk latex that oozes out in the orchards. Now what is the orchard? Suppose you are doing the apple farming, that complete apple farming is called as the orchards. So I repeat, Phytophora palmivora, it controls the milk weed in orchards. Second is Alternaria crassa and it controls the water hyacinth. This is Alternaria crassa and it controls this water hyacinth. And now why it is called as hyacinth? Because first of all they are the floating hydrophytes and they grow as a wild into the complete lake and blocking the sunlight and because of which the flora and fauna of the sea below the sea are being impacted and affected. Next is Fusarium species which control most of the weeds. This is the Fusarium species and it controls all of the unwanted weeds. So these are the microbial agents which can be used in controlling the weeds thus termed as bioherbicides. Bacterial pathogen as herbicides. Till now we studied about the fungus. Now let's study about the bacterial. This is Pseudomonas species, Xanthomonas species and Agrobacterium. Pseudomonas, Xanthomonas and Agrobacterium can be used as the herbicides. Insects as herbicides. Tyria moth. This is the Tyria moth which controls the weed Senecio zecobi. Now there is a difference between a moth and the butterfly but this is not butterfly, this is a moth and the name is Tyria moth. The moth is basically larger in size and they are not very active as the butterfly. Their body is being dusted with lot of powder. It controls the weed that is the name is Senecio zecobia. This is this particular weed. Insects as herbicide. Cactoblastis cactorum. It controls the cacti weed. This is the insect. The name is Cactoblastis cactorum. As the name only suggests that it is going to control this cacti weed. That is the cactus. I hope till now everything was very clear to you all because all these are very important and you need to remember and focus on the names. Now it's the time for you all to test your brain. Your very first question is antibiotic chloromycetin is obtained from A. Streptomyces erythreus, B. Penicillium chrysogenum, C. Streptomyces venezuelae or D. Streptomyces griseus. You can take your time, pause the video, write down the answer and then check. And the correct answer is Streptomyces venezuelae. Your next question is what are weeds? I suggest you all to please write down the answer in your notebook. As we already discussed, unwanted growth of plant materials is called as weeds. Your last question, enlist 
two advantages of the biogas plants and the two advantages out of we discussed the four one can be eco friendly and second it can be renewable source of energy take down the assignment explain the process of sewage water treatment before it can be discharged into the natural bodies why this treatment is essential and this we have studied today that include primary treatment secondary treatment and tertiary treatment the next question is what is biogas and write in brief about the production process for this you can refer your 12th standard textbook i hope this was very helpful to you all thank you for attending this module we'll again come back with the next module of the chapter enhancement in food production thank you